Hello everyone, RBMK enthusiasts. This is another video. In this one, I will not make a tutorial. It's just a test I'm performing in this uh, reactor. The test is to see how the reactor behaves, behaves when having a very high voiding and disconnecting the turbine. So pretty much this is the security test that was run in, the, in 1986, reactor 4. But in this case, I'm not messing up with uh, xenon. You can see xenon is at 163, pretty poison, but you can deal with it. You see, we have a lot of reactivity left. 37% of the rods are still inserted, so we have a lot of range still to withdraw rods to get more reactivity. And we are at 95% 9, of thermal power. Set point. Thermal power is at 89.9. .9. So now I will slightly and slowly increase power close to nominal. Let's go to 99. We are at 99 power set point. We can still increase half point more. Yeah. Okay, we'll leave the set point like that, the 99.5 and the neutron flux at 99.4. I will not take the risk to go half point higher. And you see the voiding is super high, 36% in the loop 1, 34% in the loop 2. This is because I'm running only one pump in each loop. We can see this in the diagram here. Red is on, green is off. So we have only one red pump in each one of the recirculation loops. I did this on purpose to have the maximum quantity of voiding contributing to the reactivity of the reactor. And in addition, I trim down the flow. So near the flow window here, you have this flow trim, which you can act clicking in these arrows. And usually it's at 100%, which provides a flow of 200, uh, sorry, 2000. And I was testing to see if I could reduce the flow close to zero to get a condition very similar to the security test that failed it, failed and ended up with an accident in Chernobyl. But actually, when you reduce the trim to zero, you just reduce the flow to around uh, 1700 here and 1600 in the loop two, which is very disappointing because it means when I run around seven, seven or eight or six percent of power, which is the one that was used during the, the accident, you don't get almost any voiding. So that's a shame. If you could reduce more flow using trim, you could really re replicate the conditions of the accident. But like this, the only way I can get a high voiding is to get the power high, like close to nominal. And like this, we got 36%. Compared to a normal operation with the three pumps working, which, which gives like 18% of voiding. So we have twice, we have twice voiding than normal. So the question here is to see if disconnecting the turbine suddenly will create a perturbation that will somehow make things go unstable. So what does it mean here unstable? You know that this reactor has a positive reactivity of the voids. It means the voids increase the reactivity of the reactor and the reactivity increases thermal power, which increases the voids because it makes more boiling. So this is a positive loop which uh, retrofits itself. This seems very dangerous, but actually it's not a big deal if you control properly the reaction by controlling the, the rods. Like uh, there is a computer that controls the rods, looks at the mm, neutron flux at very often in time. I don't know how often, but probably it's like every 0.1 of a second or so. And depending on the change of the neutron flux, it adjusts, it adjusts on the fly the rod position to keep the power or the neutron flux close to the power set point that we fix here that we set here. So this test is to see what happens with voiding, with neutron flux, and to see if 
the insertion or extraction of rods can counteract whatever is the effect on the turbine going offline on the voiding. So you see I have an, quite unusual arrangement of the windows. Usually you have the turbine below the, the absorber rod control panel. But now, because I want to have close look into the flow of the loop 1 and loop 2 and also the voiding, I have these windows here and the turbine down here. I'm hesitating if leaving a turbine in auto or setting it into manual and increasing the opening to 100%. This will reduce the drum pressure, so reactor pressure also. What will make a situation more critical, having a higher or lower drum pressure? I will set it to manual. And I will increase the opening of the valve more and more. <coughs> You see that we are quite critical with the bundle temperature. So the foil bundle temperature, we are at 800 degrees. This is quite high. We don't. It, I think we don't get yet the alarm. Okay, we have the alarm of high voiding in loop number one. So loop number one is at 36, just 1% higher than loop number two. Low main steam temperature. Yes, because the pressure just went below of 75 kilopascal. So... Yes, I agree on those. I will wait a bit just to let the drum stabilize, or maybe I will open a bit more the, the turbine valve. And then close it a bit, to, so we don't need to get too long for the asymptotic result. Okay, the, the trains look to me pretty flat, so the drum is decreasing quite slowly, actually. So I think the conditions are good to perform the test. For more historical accuracy, I will disconnect the diesel generator. So closed. So we get here the alarm now. The Emergency system not in auto, good. And the offline cooling are. Yeah, the outlet valve is closed. Probably this will kick in when things go wrong because we, we still have grid power. Everything looks fine, so the procedure will be to click on the trip button in the turbine. This will Disconnect the turbine of the generator and automatically this will trigger a closing of the main valve of the turbine. This will create a lot of vibration in the turbine because the, the rotor will start cooling. I'm not sure what will cool faster. Probably the rotor will start cooling because it's in contact with the condenser, which is cold. And this will create a lot of differential expansion, negative one, and a lot of vibration. But it's not the purpose of this test to, to look at the vibration of the turbine. The purpose of this test is to see what happens with voiding and neutron flux. And see how the control rods move. So I will write it down. Now they are at 31.1%. They are all the same. Center core and the outer core. I, do, I did this on purpose to... Monitor, monitor them more easily. Oh, okay, they, are, they just reduced to 30.9 because the fuel is being consumed. 30.8. So I will take a reading just at the moment I click to make sure. Okay, 30.7 and I will click trip and 3, 2, 1. So... Voiding increased a lot. Now it's at 54, 57%. There was a reactor scram trigger at the moment. So what the neutron ray did right at the moment the turbine was tripped, it was to, 
to have an, a negative neutron rate. So it means we did not have danger of meltdown because it seems the the velocity at which the control rod inserted could create more negative reactivity than the increase of voiding that the disconnection of the turbine could could impact on the reactivity. Now we have a super high voiding, 64%. Let's see a bit the schematics. We see that we don't have emergency cooling because we disconnected the auto diesel generators. I expected to the offline core cooling system to work from the grid, but actually it doesn't. And temperature of well, it's fine. It's uh, it went down to 300. So in the way we performed this test, there was no there was no accident at all. The scrum could reduce reactivity faster than the increase of reactivity produced by voiding. So this doesn't replicate at all the accident that happened in Chernobyl. Mainly, actually, I didn't expect it, it to be replicated because this simulator is calibrated with the post-accident features or parameters of the nuclear power plant, which is a much lower reactivity because it doesn't have the graphite displacers you know, attached to the control rods and several other modifications that make it less reactive. So. It cannot run anymore with natural uranium. It needs slightly enriched uranium and it's more safe because it's less reactive and because it doesn't have these displacers, you you don't have the mm, transient increase of activity in local areas of the reactor when you when you push the scram button. So the result of the, of the test is Mm, safety wise is good because it shows the reactor is safe but the real purpose of this was to make a second video about the accident the Chernobyl accident and this makes me think that it, this will not be possible because this reactor is the new one which does not allow such accident to happen because you see voiding doesn't mm, how to say Voiding doesn't over, uh, overwhelm anymore the, the reactivity that the control rods can, can decrease. So that's it. I hope you like it and see you in the next video. Bye.